So again, thanks, Chris, and thanks, uh, everybody, the whole organizing committee for this opportunity. I'm very, very happy to, to be here. Really, really a pleasure. So uh, we've seen, uh, well, we, I'm going to talk about something about this Saref journey, as, as you already mentioned. I retitled the presentation because it's about Saref, its application, its development, but uh, I thought uh, then uh, when preparing the slides that uh, this title better suits to the, to the situation. It will become clear also a little bit more uh, later during the talk. Why? So, uh, well, uh, I think there is not much more to say about this because you already gave a perfect introduction about that. Maybe just a little bit more about where I work, which is the, you know, um, the, in the data science department which is part of the unit ICT of TNO. So just to say that the data science department is, is has different expertise combined together. So it's more about AI and uh, classical data analytics uh, expertise together with also semantics and then expertise, of course, in standards, open standards, like, uh, well, that's why I'm also here. And also interoperability architectures and also data governance. So there is a little bit of a mix of different expertise there. And of course, I belong more to the part of the semantic style than, than interoperability. Uh, for the rest, uh, things were already uh, mentioned by, by you, Chris. So, uh, of course, uh, I also mentioned that uh, besides this, uh, there are strong collaborations with the universities. And uh, of course, uh, well, uh, one of those is the uh, Polytechnic of Madrid uh, concerning SAREF. But we also work, for example, in close collaboration with other universities, the University of Twente in the Netherlands. Uh, Fry University at Amsterdam uh, because we also have uh, collaborations and also PhD students together. One of them is actually in the context of the Interconnect project uh, that, uh, well, about which we will talk today a little bit uh, more. Then uh, uh, about TNO is the Netherlands Organization for Applied Scientific Research and it's obviously uh, applied research so it's an intermediary between research, uh, uh, fundamental uh, knowledge and uh, industry. Uh, there is a mission of TNO and also the research is, is, is a mix of uh, technology technology, policy, business, and social innovation. So it's, it's very broad uh, what, what we do there. And the mission is to, as you can read there, connect people and knowledge to create innovation that boosts competitive strength of the industry and well-being of society in a sustainable way. Then uh, there is a lot of people in different locations in the Netherlands working for TNO. I am based in the, the Hague, uh, for example, and uh, um, there is a mix of funding. So there is uh, governmental funding, but there is also customer uh, research, is customer uh, project, uh, B2B uh, projects. Uh, we have uh, then also uh, uh, contract research, then we do have international project H2020, well, Horizon, uh, now we will see already in Europe and so on. And uh, so it's a mix uh, uh, of, of funding uh, for uh, TNO. And uh, it's also organizing units. As you can see, there are different units, nine units, uh, along all the different, uh, let's say, areas and uh, domains in order to be present in, in the, the entire, in the whole of the society. That's also the, the mission. Uh, I work uh, uh, in the Information and Communication Technology uh, unit, the ICT unit, which, of course, it's a more uh, horizontal unit, if you think about maybe different domains, then ICT is a little bit everywhere. Uh, so that's why, well, which, which is typical thing because uh, also in what we do here with, with ontologies and interoperability, it's an interoperability that goes across domains, so it fits, uh, it fits very well the, 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 the picture that I'm giving also uh, about, uh, about the end. Now, um, what are we going to talk about today is, uh, well, there is an abstract that you probably read, so we're not going uh, again uh, over that. Only a few remarks on that is that, indeed, I retitled to uh, multiple, pa multiple paths to the destination, the Saref journey. Another thing is that it was actually 2013 when the, when the journey started, in the sense that 2014 was the first project, but something happened already before, so now we're seven years later, not six. And uh, actually, it uh, was at the beginning uh, named as Smart Appliances Reference Ontology. 
uh, SARF, so the acronym space, but a uh, uh, few years, la last year, uh, it was renamed to Smart Applications Reference Ontology to give it a broader, uh, let's say, uh, coverage of things because Smart Appliances feels a lot only for Smart Home and only the Smart Appliances in there, while in the meantime, it became uh, a model for, for uh, the whole IoT and different domains. So that's why it, it became then Smart Applications Reference Ontology. Uh, now, the journey begins. Uh, so, as I mentioned, 2013 was when the first initiative was launched. So, there was uh, uh, the European Commission, some people there together with the industry. Uh, realized that there was so much fragmentation in the smart appliances domain, so much fragmentation, standards, and so on, that uh, it was necessary to create, so they really felt the need to create a commonly agreed language. So something that would be interoperable across different solutions and different standards and, and, and protocols. And uh, there was therefore a study that was then conducted by TNO, and that study started in 2014 and finished in 2015 in March. So if there are more uh, pointers to more information about this, so I'll not say much about what happened there because obviously the result is SARF, our first version at least of SARF. But I want to remind what was the motivation already at the time, because the motivation is, is still actually there. So uh, buildings are the culprits of uh, basically of very big deal of the total energy consumption in Europe. Uh, so more than 40%. So obviously something needed to be done there, especially because there are more and more appliances, more and more appliances that become uh, smart. So there, there was a possibility there to do something for improve this energy efficiency, efficiency to optimize, uh, to, do, to do something about this. So, um, a lot of vendors, that was the situation, uh, a lot of different devices becoming all networked devices, but uh, then there was a need for open and standardized interfaces among, among, among these devices. So, so many standards, uh, but then, uh, yeah, how, 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 how to interoperate, how to talk to each other. And that was the reason for asking. So the study was already asking about an ontology. So that was the interesting thing because even at that time was an ontology, what, what is it? Uh, imagine the industry, the manufacturers of smart appliances dealing with, with this concept of an ontology. So what, what, what is it? But the commission was very clear that the ontology was the way to go. And that was very nice because there was a vision behind that and a clear understanding that this was the way to go to uh, enable interoperability among all these uh, partners, industrial practitioners. And uh, here we go. So, uh, okay, what is SARF? So this was just the beginning of the journey. And uh, what is SARF? Uh, so so, so but there are a lot of ways to show it. And uh, I think it's fun, it's nice to see a couple of them. Uh, because otherwise we, we would keep talking about SARF and maybe, well, some of you know, uh, but some of other people will, will be wondering until the end of the presentation, but, but what is it? So uh, it's, it's an ontology, so it's a model. So you can see here, this is the SARF core model, which is actually quite simple. And that was one of the requirements since the beginning, something simple that industrial practitioner could, could understand, use, find themselves with, uh, in, and, uh, and use, and adopt. Uh, it's about devices, so very, very, very focused on the concept of uh, device, devices that are, uh, are, well, logical or physical devices, but then in general, devices are characterized by, by functions, what they do. So if it's a washing machine, it will have start-stop functions. If it's a light, uh, it will have the possibility to switch on and off. Uh, there are commands related to this function and states in which this device can be found. So you can switch on uh, a light uh, and uh, therefore it will be possible to have in the on-off state. 
Uh, in the moment, uh, these devices with function are um, connected to a network, which is always the case, especially with uh, the smart appliances and uh, all the nice uh, uh, smart devices that we have now, we have the possibility to offer a service. So if there is a non-on-off fu function for a device, uh, then uh, in the moment it's uh, connected into the, in the network, it uh, becomes a switch on service, for example, that the device can, can offer. They are designed for accomplishing, uh, accomplishing some tasks. So the washing machine, it would be for while cleaning, uh, something else, lights could be for comfort, uh, and uh, you, you name them basically. Then there are devices that can have uh, profiles, especially uh, when you go about, uh, when it's about energy efficiency, then you have, for example, power profiles, so the curve, the usage of these devices over time, how it happens, how they should be used and so on. Just to give an example, uh, and this profile can be uh, about uh, properties. As I mentioned, you could have power profile, energy profile, and uh, devices uh, on the right part comes the, the, the very important part because it's um, devices can be sensors, actuators, so sensors in general. You can have um, uh, measurements, so there are sensing function, and then you can have uh, measurements with, of course, uh, unit of measurement measures so always uh, necessary to be uh, specified. These measurements uh, are about properties, so devices are actually used to measure or control in case it's actuator properties. The, these properties can be, you just name them, anything that can be measured, sensed or controlled, uh, so it could be uh, light, il uh, luminance, it could be uh, energy, power, temperature, humidity, and uh, you go further and further, depending on the use cases, of course, there are so many properties there. Then uh, another important concept is the one of feature of interest. There was already some, some, uh, some awesome discussion yesterday. This was added uh, recently to the SARF model because uh, following also the best practices in the CS project and uh, the SSN ontology, SOSA ontology, obviously, because it helps to give context to everything because uh, otherwise we know that there are devices, but then while well, devices that maybe are in a, in a room or our camera is measuring the speed of something, but then uh, thanks to the feature of interest, we can know that it's the, uh, the, the speed of, of a car or of a person uh, or of a bike. And this makes a big difference of course, uh, in, in the context, whether it's the speed of, of what uh, that it's uh, being measured. So this is uh, the model. So, okay. Uh, then it's also a technical specification. Uh, it's actually, to be more precise, is a series of technical specifications. Now here I'm pointing out only at the SARF version 3, but uh, along the presentation you will see the pointers to all the other specifications and there is very very good documentation anyways on the Etsy website where all this information can be found. So it's also then a technical specification uh, by Etsy and this is extremely important of course and it was a, a specification since the beginning so uh, SARF was created in March 2015 and already November 2015 Etsy made it uh, a technical specification with as you can see several versions we are now at uh, version uh, 3 which was released uh, well, quite recently in February then uh, yeah, this is something to be very proud of because it's also sort of a portal with a very, very pretty and user-friendly documentation. So there are, uh, well, we will come also to whom we need to thank for this uh, amazing uh, work because it's, it's really, really nice. So uh, it's uh, a very good documentation. And, uh, uh, well, I don't know, maybe, let's see, it's... Uh, it's it's nice just to go very quick with it uh, you can do it later of course but it's it's really really nice looks awesome so you can see here so there are all the information all the metadata with all with all the versions and of course on the left you you also have all the classes properties that you can uh, press um, go into the details and so on and this is great because it's integrating also uh, the uh, technical specification itself so you can see that you have 
have uh, the pictures, uh, you have the, the descriptions, and then you can go and see, well, okay, device, and you can jump them into the specific description of the devices and what are the, uh, of course, class, super classes, subclasses, domain, range, and so on. So it's uh, really, 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 really uh, nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's uh, now go back to them to the presentation uh, and uh, by the way you can also of course uh, uh, not only have the, the full ontology but you can also uh, browse uh, every part of the ontology by itself and it's very nice because then you can see where the different concepts are defined the, the versions in which other extensions they are used also so it's really really awesome so that's also Saref uh, on the Etsy portal. Uh, so uh, then uh, we have, oops, sorry. Uh, then uh, Saref, uh, it's a repository uh, for developers. So besides that uh, documentation, there is also uh, the, the, the Git for, for the developers, where there are, uh, so the possibility to, to develop the ontology, to submit also uh, new, new ontology, new extensions, new contribution to this. And it's very clear. It's all these very well documented and so on. And uh, well, I'm putting here the main contact for the Saref portal with Maxime Lefrancois. And he was the leader of all these uh, uh, um, projects in Etsy, especially Stats Force, that uh, uh, resulted in this. Of course, he's not the only one. There are other people involved, also Raul, uh, Maria from UPM. But uh, this is really, really a great uh, result of the activity. Activities, uh, recent, uh, let's say, activities on Saref. So he's actually the person, Maxim is the person that should tell you more about this because, of course, he knows everything and uh, I hope there will be occasions also where he can uh, tell more about uh, this, this great work. So Saref then is a repository for developers. And another great thing is there is a pipeline and an entire automated workflow that helps to check consistency and correctness of the models, of the ontologies that are in there, and also for creating automatically the documentation. Well, automatically, of course, it's a mix, but, uh, but after uh, writing the documentation and the TS, this also incorporates um, in the website, in the documentation, in the HTML documentation, what, what we've seen before uh, when I showed you on the Etsy portal, how the documentation looks like. So this is great because really uh, having this automated pipeline helps to find out, uh, well, a lot of things and there are warnings about things that otherwise, well, we would just miss, uh, just, just overlook, not see. And this pipeline is really, really, really nice uh, to have that. So it's, it's a little bit tough because you have to pass the pipeline, but that's, uh, that's actually the idea, right? That in the moment you're publishing something, you want this artifact, this ontology to be perfect in the sense that it's uh, a quality, it's well designed, it's correct, it's consistent, and this really, really helps uh, a lot. So that's that's also Saref that makes it uh, different from also other ontologies uh, existing and uh, also is a core ontology with uh, 10 extensions in different domains. In particular, there are some extensions, uh, energy, environment, building, uh, city, industry, manufacturing, and agriculture that are already available. And there are four that are going to be published very, very soon. They were actually approved in their final version uh, yesterday, two days ago. So uh, probably at the end of the month, uh, you will also see here uh, Sare for Automotive, Sare for uh, E-Health and Aging Well, Sare for Wearables, and Sare for Water. Uh, this, uh, there is more information about extensions uh, and uh, um, I think uh, that uh, special extensions of interest for uh, this community are actually obviously the Sare for Building extension. Here, a little bit of information and also some pointer where to find more about that and also the technical specifications, but it looked to me uh, already from uh, the uh, presentations yesterday in, in the morning that uh, while a lot of you are already aware of Saref for Building and even using it, which is nice to see. So Saref for Building is based on the IFC uh, standard and uh, 
obviously not the whole standard has been transformed because it's, uh, it's quite a challenge, but uh, um, all the part that it's about devices has been transformed, all the hierarchy of devices. And this was, or again, a massive, great work done by Maria Poveda from UPM uh, in order to, um, to, to really uh, include a part and link uh, to the uh, smart building community. And I have seen yesterday that, of course, uh, the question arises, what's also the link with uh, the both ontology and so on? And it seems to me that also the way uh, people uh, are already using it, looks like that then so there is all the, the, the layout well if you if you go and see that the domain so it looks more that uh, of course it, it helps to 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 define the layout uh, in terms of building what's the building space uh, what are the physical objects there and uh, the rooms uh, where the devices are um, located and it seems that uh, some some people are already using so for this part uh, they are reusing maybe the bot ontology well anyways uh, they all refer to the ioc standard so uh, there is a choice of, of what to use and then saref is then used to describe the and saref for, for building to describe the devices uh, using the hierarchy of devices that has been defined in, in this ontology I have extra slides uh, on this, but uh, I think for now I skip them because there are a lot of things I would like to talk about. And I think uh, some of you already know a little bit also what's inside for a building. Then there is SARA for energy. Of course, we keep talking about energy efficiency, energy optimization. We talk about uh, demand side flexibility, so the flexibility in the usage of energy that can be nowadays offered uh, by, by the user. Uh, so, and the user can have some flexibility, can offer some flexibility in terms of when to use uh, appliances and devices in the home for um, energy purposes. Uh, by receiving eventually some incentives uh, when uh, maybe tariffs are lower and so on. So there is an um, um, interaction with the smart grid, uh, for, between smart grid and user in order to, to have flexibility uh, to, to, to deal with, with the energy available in different moments during the day. Then uh, Sarah for Energy was uh, developed originally based on the data models of uh, two main uh, associations of uh, smart appliances manufacturers, Energy Tom and Nibas. And uh, this is some uh, information, of course, uh, also about SARA for Energy that you can find on the Etsy uh, website. And uh, this is the model with its far too small, you cannot see it, it's just an overview, so no worries about that. We are not going to see what, what's in that. I can just tell you that uh, you have devices and profiles from Saref that are then uh, specialized into power profile. Power profiles, which are the curve, uh, the, the, the usage, the power uh, of specific um, appliances and devices over time, which are made of alternatives. So you can say, for example, that your washing machine can use an alternative which is for the eco-friendly, uh, uh, you have an eco-friendly preference when it's better to do it, uh, to run it in a sustainable way, let's say, or maybe you want to do it when it's cheaper and then you can have alternatives. So the washing machine can say, hey, hello, I'm a washing machine, I'm doing this and I have these two alternatives and that's how it works. Uh, then these alternatives have are made of power sequences and there are ways of with, with certain starting time, finish time, possibilities of, uh, express preferences of the users and uh, this is how uh, SARA for energy uh, basically it looks like. Uh, then uh, SARA for cities is, is also something that can be relevant also because everything that while well, the step is, is short uh, somehow because you have a lot of things and devices like lights and so on, uh, they, they, they work uh, in the home in the same way, the concept, the, the function, the way you deal with them in, in SARA is, is the same uh, whether they are in the building or outside the building. So also SARA for city might be uh, relevant in this sense uh, also for this community. And uh, this is uh, an overview that can be found also on the Etsy website. 
and uh, it's about of course the things that also happen in the city and how to describe these things and then uh, facility and uh, services that uh, are a part of the offer of uh, certain uh, administration cities municipalities and events that can happen there uh, so i don't know football match a concert and things like that and all the uh, type of uh, consequences that can be in the city and also at the level of, of the building of course uh, in, in that case if there are restrictions of things happening in, in that then um so <laughs> I showed you Farash, documentation model, uh, nice portal, uh, repository, extensions but I go back to the question of what is Saref because uh, I showed what is Saref, but I think the most interesting thing is showing who is Saref, who is behind Saref. And uh, Saref is people. Uh, I think that's really the strength uh, of this. And uh, uh, people that are committing, driven, passionate, and that brings uh, and uh, uh, continue the development of this uh, over and over uh, in, in, in time. Now, uh, these are some of the people, because believe me that there are many, 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 many more. Uh, only problem is that, well, I also used a tool that was uh, giving me limitations in the number of pictures, and also I didn't have uh, infinite time to go and browse for all the pictures of, of everybody. So please forgive me for all those that are not here now in this, uh, in this uh, collage, in this, in this picture but uh, there is uh, really really a lot of people and i think that's the strength that's the beauty that's uh, what makes this uh, something a little bit different than other things uh, that that are around so uh, well you will recognize uh, some of these uh, faces but uh, i take you to the next uh, slide so, some of these people uh, have worked there uh, and they are not working on uh, Saref anymore uh, because uh, well a lot of things happen and sometimes people change companies uh, do <laughs> something else uh, some other people joined uh, joined later also and uh, some other people are, are there since since the beginning and uh, still there so it's uh, it's very nice and that's the really big asset and value of uh, SARF so these people have been going together through a very 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 long way and uh, so as you can see starting in 2013 and uh, we are definitely not uh, done yet <laughs> we are probably actually now in, in a new beginning uh, phase so i mentioned to you already that uh, the study started in 2013 with the, with a vision of somebody and actually this was uh, i want to specifically to mention this person rogelio segovia who is, was the uh, european commission uh, officer that started everything he really had a vision now he passed away two years ago but without him Saref uh, wouldn't be here so he was really a person with with vision that started uh, everything and uh, really I'm, I'm very 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 grateful and we should be very grateful to him. So that's the, the first study which was launched in collaboration with the, the industry and uh, Etsy Smart M2M. Then 2014 uh, the first study of TNO and the publication in 2015 uh, of the first version of SAREF. Then a second study of the Commission was launched, and this was more in the context of uh, uh, demand-side flexibility, so the interoperability for demand-side flexibility. So the idea was, okay, we've seen SARF, we've seen that uh, uh, this can be used and it's, uh, it, it, it resulted in a technical specification for the smart home. How do we deal and uh, basically merge or use it also with everything for the demand side flexibility? So for, for, for in the energy domain and with all the other standards that exist in, the, in, the, in, in, in this domain, can actually sort of be used, uh, is already covering concepts uh, that are present in this domain. And that was a study that, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so that, that was the purpose of the study. In the meantime, there was, uh, uh, a new uh, a specialist task force um, 
um, put in place by Etsy about uh, uh, making the first three SAREF extensions. So SAREF was uh, a core ontology, but uh, it was a little bit about energy efficiency, as I mentioned, but then it was clear that it was better to separate extensions in different domains and make it uh, modular, have a network of ontologies, a framework of ontologies that could be modularly used for different purposes in different domains. And that's why you have SAREF for energy, for environment and for building which also uh, resulted in the publication on a new version of SAREF because, of course, then something was also moved to some extent. So, for example, the, the layout of the building before was in SAREF core, and then it was moved to SAREF for building. The part of the energy profile before was in SAREF core, and then it was moved to um, energy in SAREF for energy and so on. So, a new version of SAREF. And in the meantime, there were the first result of this second study on demand side flexibility, which resulted in a great uh, demo, which was actually done at the European Commission premises with uh, a lot of uh, uh, smart appliances, manufacturers, uh, uh, devices, so real device that were using SAREF for interoperability. So it was very interesting because we had to bring into the room at DigiConnect in, in Brussels all the appliances. So you, you, you had the washing machines, dishwashers, and, and a lot of big things going through the scan of security there, but the result was really, really nice. And then SAREF was implemented in a, um, in a gateway from, from Sierra Wireless, which was doing the translation from different protocol and standards because there were the smart meters, the real smart meters that were uh, using a certain standard, actually DSLM calls them. Uh, smart appliances that were using another standard, the Spine, uh, and then you had smart appliances like, okay, typically dishwasher, washing machines, but then there were EV chargers for uh, cars, uh, there were uh, heat pumps, there were, there, were, there were a lot of different uh, appliances uh, there that uh, were using this concept. So this was really the very first uh, demonstration in, in a small scale, obviously, with one type of different appliances, but commercial reappliances that could use the concept of uh, interoperability because of uh, a SARF, the use of an ontology to talk to e each other. And that was really a great result. In the meantime, in 2018, we had more uh, specialty task, task force uh, from ETS in the European Commission. Uh, which started the, the work that uh, I mentioned before for the SARF portal. You have seen the documentation and everything, so this also took, uh, took some time and it's something that is already going some time. So from a concept, from a prototype to something that is now uh, almost uh, completely up and running. It's going to be finished uh, soon. And including also the workflow for what's the process if anybody wants to submit a new version of SAREF or improvements or a new extension and so on. So now there is also workflow in place. So how to do it and how to embed being in the, the usual standardization process of Etsy and Smart M2M. So now it will become much, much, much easier for everybody. Uh, and then, so this happened here in 2018 and 19, and then, sorry, 2020. We are now, uh, as I mentioned, in February 2020, we had a new version of SARF, this time version 3. So based on the experience of, uh, sorry, one of the uh, uh, specialist task force published the three extensions for city industry manufacturing and agriculture. So there was a new cycle of looking at what we learned and what needed to be done. And then a new version of SAREF was released where the name changed, as I mentioned, in smart applications reference uh, ontology. And uh, then uh, now we have the other extensions being done. Now I'll go 
quick because I also want to, <laughs> to come to the nicest part uh, of the discussion. So uh, it looks straight this way, right? This path, but it was <laughs> it was everything but straight, obviously. So there are always multiple parts to the destination. I found this uh, picture actually is from from some uh, fitness uh, sportive uh, website where they have blogs for this. But it makes quite a lot of sense, right? Because uh, there is not a single way, and that's that's not a problem. Actually, you never know the way because. Uh, you, you you have a vision you know what's coming where you want to go but you don't you shouldn't be concerned to don't to know in details where you go because even there we we had no clue that all this would happen there we were just doing step by step and uh, well somehow things kept happening and people kept believing in the things and uh, the ecosystem of stakeholders and partners uh, grew and uh, this became something uh, bigger and better every time. So yeah, so what, what is the destination actually? So well, a path to a destination which is okay now as I mentioned SAREF is a technical specification, it's a framework of, with many extensions is maintained by a lot of experts collaborating with each other, support of Etsy, the commission, and there is a great portal that uh, helps the community to adopt, use, and improve SAREF. SAREF. Not the final destination, only a new beginning, to be honest. Curiosity. Okay, so I promise I would say some curiosity also. We'll talk about some curiosity. So uh, it was nice to go and see back one of the publications of that time because uh, in 2015 we were actually writing about this that we needed user friendly solution to promote the adoption of SARF in such a way that also third party developers could use the ontology. We needed uh, to define a sort of extension and maintenance workflow to manage the extension and uh, using versioning consistency checking. So who is going uh, to be responsible for the maintenance extension and governance? We were wondering at that time uh, because uh, we were also thinking it should, well, you can distribute it, but then at the end it should still be delegated to a single party, an individual organization. And then which organization should that be? Because we just created SARF, right? And then who should do that? Well, TNO created SARF, but they were just the expert in that case at the beginning. The EC was the actually owner of the uh, SARF and Etsy was uh, taking it into their standardization process. But then actually the real experts were the industrial stakeholders who, who had collaborated in, in that. And then new parties could pop up and maybe what is, what's the role of also other standardization uh, bodies in that? So it's, it's it's nice to see all these things uh, written here and compare and see then uh, where, where we are now. So what what's the message here is that I'm, I'm very glad that there was that there was a vision already there with questions and things and what we are doing today, although we had no idea who would be part of this and how this would happen, but uh, this just ended up into 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 the right uh, into the right result uh, of which we are, we are very happy and here are some other excerpts of, of that uh, which which show that this, this is just very nice and in line of what the uh, the, 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 the the ideas of, of the projects that have been initiated many many years later so in 2020 we are saying that the community, it's so important. The developers need to understand SARF, its documentation, and then some projects have been set up in order to deal with that. And the result is the great uh, SARF portal with Etsy really taking uh, the role of, uh, um, of, of, of uh, leading the way in the SARF, uh, SARF uh, usage adoption and, and so on. Uh, then, uh, less, some lessons learned. So uh, why it was successful? So why we managed to end up with something that is now uh, used and adopted, and I hope uh, it will be even, even more now that we have this very nice and clear uh, way of uh, understanding and contributing also for the whole community. Because it started with a vision, so a lot of things changed on the way, as I mentioned, a lot of people, for example, and a lot of well, projects, they were there, they were not there, but uh, step by step, project by project, believing in the vision, 
still uh, things uh, things uh, happen and uh, also, a very important thing, it was a need and explicit request from the industry. I personally worked in other domains also before this one, where the concept and the vision was exactly the same because this problem of interoperability, let's face it, it's, it's, it's in every domain. So I actually personally started in the logistic domain where this need was extremely uh, important. But uh, I believe that there, the, 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 the people there, organizations were totally aware, but it was more uh, a push from us uh, to tell them this is the solution, you should use it, than a specific request from them. And that's why it didn't work, in my opinion, as well as in the smart appliances domain, where uh, the industry really, although they didn't know <laughs> that much what the ontology was, they could understand and they were also pushed a little bit by the commission in this direction saying this is the right way we will we will get to this uh, because nobody will win nobody will be the winner in the market we need interoperability we need agreement we need consensus and uh, that's why also then since the beginning there was close interaction with the industry they created SARF with us i think that's the most beautiful uh, thing actually bottom up so not just top down making well there were very good remarks also yesterday by the keynote i agree i mean upper ontologies are are, are great and are well somehow needed for something but not for the real thing so we had remarks like why you didn't use an upper ontology because if we use an upper ontology i mean the industry stakeholders after one uh, moment would just run away and say what 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 are you talking about we cannot understand this so we needed to be close to the industry close to things that people practitioners developers could understand and and the radio ontologies were not too easy to <laughs> to grasp but at least we needed a simple ontology uh, it was an iterative and interacting approach. It's true that it's a lot of overhead when you have to talk with all the possible stakeholders and talk and explain and what it is and what are you doing and why you are not actually trying to compete with them but actually help there and so on. But this created and still creates trust in, in our work, in the way we do this, uh, with the process that we have in place of uh, collecting requirements and doing things and creating the models. And this, of course, increases the chances of acceptance of the results. It engaged more and more people on the way, so stakeholders from various domains, uh, new experts, that's also the nice thing. We, we got new experts uh, over and over. As, as, as I also mentioned, while well, TNO started then, we started to work with TNO. Then it came um, uh, Maxim with all, with all the other people, and then it, it, it continued, and, and I'm sure there will be more, more, and more, and we had so many experts in the several extensions, so people are the main assets. I will never repeat this enough. Then SARF got the support of the standardization world already at an early stage. This was very, very important. Etsy immediately said, okay, we will support this and make technical specifications out of this. Uh, so, uh, again, formal ontology with full reasoning, very beautiful and perfect, uh, doesn't uh, guarantee uh, adoption by the industry. Uh, we needed to be close to the industry, to their needs, and be simple, and be still correct and design and good quality artifact, of course. But uh, uh, then uh, was uh, driven by a demand, a strong demand from the industry. And uh, uh, of course, uh, enforcement by the European Commission. It's, it's not that it's in any regulation is enforcing to use SARF because I believe that this shouldn't be the case. Interoperability should be because people decided to understand the concept of interoperability and they want to use one of the standards, not because they are forced to, to do. Uh, and that's the open uh, part of this. Uh, but uh, uh, this helped, this helped, of course, because the Commission believing and then saying, well, okay, but then uh, SANS, uh, SARF uh, is uh, something that, that should be used, of course, it, it helped uh, a lot. And uh, also what we learned is that the way standardization was done in the past, at least in Etsy, so the, but not only in Etsy, of course, and the other standardization bodies, was not able to deal with this new dynamic uh, artifacts, these ontologies that are changing over time, that can be adapted, and that's the beauty of them, that they don't stay the same, but in the, they, they, they evolve, they improve, and they can be changed. While uh, standards, while you make a standard and then, 
especially if you do AEN, uh, um, uh, a European standard really, and not only a technical specification like instead fees, you risk that in the moment it is it is approved uh, by all members and all states and so on, then you have already a new version and the document became obsolete. So the, the whole process needed to, to, to become lighter and so on. And that's what happened, uh, you can see in Etsy, uh, where the, uh, and the clear documentation and automation of this process is crucial also for adoption. So now that we also have this, this pipeline repositories and everything, it's going to be even uh, much, much, uh, much better. Uh, creation of consensus is fostered by neutral parties, so experts like TNO, UPN, MIN and saint -Etienne are seen as neutral parties, not competitive to the market. So this helps to create uh, trust uh, and uh, yeah, to create consensus, so this is, uh, this is also something we learned. And uh, a clear process for maintenance, evolution and governance should be taken into account since the beginning. So now we have gone through a path that, as I mentioned, was not straight and a lot of things happened and we ended up in the right uh, way, uh, having eventually Etsy that was uh, managing everything and helping us uh, to set uh, everything in, in place. But uh, this should be taken into account since the beginning because uh, it's, a, it's a crucial, crucial part. Uh, now, uh, I should be probably finishing by now, but I need, I really want to mention uh, the next thing, which is uh, what's next, at least for TNO and a lot of other partners, is uh, this project, uh, H2020 Interconnect Large Scale Pilot. So it's a project that started in, uh, recently, in 2019. And it's about a lot of things, but mainly it's about providing interoperable solution that connects smart homes, buildings and grids. So this was one of the things that, uh, that there was a call for this large scale pilot a couple of years ago, which was explicitly asking also for the use of SARF and the use of standards, because uh, that's one of the most important things to reuse what's in there and not create uh, again over and over. So it's based uh, on the ontology uh, and uh, the partners uh, know very well that uh, this uh, needs to be used and they agree and understand uh, the concepts, uh, the concept of that. It's about integrating different domains uh, smart homes, building and grids, it's a very big challenge because it's already difficult to do this type of things uh, and create this type of solutions in one domain, but in three different domains, bringing them together, stakeholders, domains that evolved in, in, in parallel, in different times, different community, using different standards, using different architectures, is really, really a big, big, uh, big challenge, but uh, it's, uh, it's also a, a thing that, uh, that it was never done before so it's it's really 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 nice to to do uh, and uh, uh, yeah so there are uh, goals so there are some slides here so uh, they will be available and then you can also uh, go through them and read more about that i go uh, basically to to the main things uh, there so as as, as i mentioned there will be uh, the, the, there will be a combination of IoT standard and platforms with the smart grid and energy uh, world uh, domain. Uh, it's a large scale pilot, so there are large scale pilots indeed. So I mentioned that a couple of years ago we had a small demonstrator with appliances, commercial appliances, and uh, manufacturers, but this goes obviously beyond. So it's about uh, also user acceptance so there are pilots seven pilots in europe with uh, well, real users so we are coming into the homes of people uh, with the real appliances with all the devices in connection with really the the, the dso's distributor system operators and tso's uh, depending on the countries this will create a new marketplace for for new services in in, in europe so a new marketplace where, where you can put your services and then uh, decide what, uh, what the user can decide what 
to use and for what use, of course, their, their data. Uh, the data giving, well, of course, uh, offering the possibility to use the data means also possibility to integrate for the users and to get great new services that they cannot even imagine now, because when you combine data that comes from smart buildings, smart home and uh, smart uh, uh, grid, you can really do a lot of things. And uh, of course, this will increase the use of renewables and energy efficiency because that's a very important goal at the end. We will do this. Uh, we do this uh, using Sarif. Sarif is the framework uh, of ontologies that uh, will be used, and uh, of course. Uh, there will be, there is the question, uh, well, uh, how, how, how to use it and how to make it in, in practice. So I, I'll skip some slides uh, because uh, I think what, what we want to see, for example, is so there are, there are several pilots, uh, seven in different countries. For example, I can spend a few words about the pilot uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, in the Netherlands, uh, we have residential buildings. So we have two buildings in the area of Eindhoven uh, with people. One is being built now and one is already built. So they will have the appliances and the uh, smart uh, uh, IoT devices uh, from, uh, from the project, from the manufacturers. They will be using uh, SARF uh, for interoperability. Uh, there are, so we collaborate with one of the main uh, construction companies in the Netherlands and all their daughter companies including their telecom companies and so on. So it's, it's really, really nice to see all these things coming together. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is one of the examples. Uh, I think what's great is to see that in these 50 members of this project, uh, the entire value chain is covered, research and development and consultancy. We have the manufacturers, so we have all these, these products that are real products coming into the houses. We have the associations, we have KNX, we have EBAS, we have well, also Energy Tom represented by some of the partners. We we have ICT provider and IoT providers, some DSOs, retailers, and uh, end users also. So it's a completely a chain that makes things really real. This is a real step uh, uh, forward. It will run until 23, uh, 2023. Now we're ready with use cases. We're uh, busy with use cases and business models and uh, uh, a reference architecture. And the challenge there is to connect reference architectures that comes from the IoT, from the smart energy and from the smart building. So it's, uh, it's a lot of work, but it goes, it goes okay. And then it's about, well, there is this word of certifying the platforms available, the pilots in the real world works with already existing digital platforms. So how do you, well, certify and use there? That's, that's um, what, what, what we're going to work on. And then there will be the, the, the pilots. And of course, there is some standardization in this involved. And of course, there will be open calls. So at certain point, we will open the uh, possibilities and work what's uh, already available in the infrastructure and in the pilots. And we will ask uh, very smart and brilliant people to bring their ideas uh, to build a new innovative service on, on top of that, using uh, what's already in there and improving on that. Challenges ahead. I think, uh, Chris, I look at the time and I think uh, <laughs> uh, there is not uh, too much time uh, left, uh, right? Yeah, well, uh, to get for the next session is six minutes. So um, perhaps we could move into questions and we could move some yeah, of this on the yeah. Slack as well. Yeah, because there are still a few slides, but I think it's also nice. Well, I think I gave the an idea at least of what's happening. And then I think, uh, well, maybe we will have other moments to talk into more details of, of what's happening now and what are the challenges. So yeah, I would love to hear some, some questions, of course. Great, and thanks, Laura, for that. It's, it's really good to see everything going on with Saraf and how, how far it's come. And um, yeah, I didn't realize there are so many extensions now to, to Saraf that have been developed, and it's really great to see that. Uh, we have a question here from Sylvain Marie, and um, so, so perhaps uh, you would like to ask that question first. Hi, Sylvain speaking. I was wondering, uh, Etsy is a standardization body. So in theory, you could push uh, SARF as a EU standard and then the ISO standard. 
would it be a good idea? What do you think about the, the, the pace of the typical ISO standards and the, how ontology engineering works? Is it compatible? What's your view on that? Yeah, so there have been already. So actually, it's a kind of a choice to have it now as a technical specification. We had uh, uh, some uh, discussions also with the Commission and the interested bodies, also because take into account that the, at least in Europe, the two European standardization bodies are ETSI and SENELEC. Uh, and uh, you could do an EN, actually, you could do it via ETSI in collaboration then with SENELEC or, well, anyways, there are, there are other ways. Until now, we stopped here because uh, uh, it's a little bit, as I mentioned, uh, it takes longer. So as you can see, we are releasing uh, every, I don't know, every sometime a new version of SARF. It's stable, it's stable, but then some, some improvements are necessary because you do the extensions and then you see that something needs to be promoted to the higher level in SARF, uh, for example, because you find it in different extensions. And then uh, uh, different extensions, like in this case in the interconnect project well we are working now with new partners so a new big ecosystem so we will submit a new version of sarf for energy so you will need a new version so things change quite rapidly so if you were uh, to do uh, en uh, the process and then also you mentioned the eyes and so on the process uh, to create the consensus and go through that is much much longer and then the risk would be to have an obsolete uh, obsolete um, uh, standard in the moment you even release it. So there were thoughts at the moment we are still there and uh, it's it's still open the question but uh, these are basically the, the, the arguments and the concerns and the thoughts in, in there. Okay, great and uh, we have another hand raised, uh, Gonzalo uh, Gil or Gil? Uh, would you like to ask a question? Yes. Uh, hello. Well, I'm, I'm actually Iker. Uh, ah, hello, Iker. Uh, the, <laughs> the name of my, of my colleague. Hello, Laura. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I think it's uh, very interesting to see how an ontology like Saref evolved. And, and especially to see how you adapted other other efforts, other work like the CIS, because I think this is the uh, the way we should go. We have an ontology, new requirements arise, and and probably these requirements are addressed by other ontologies. So we should try to to join forces or to collaborate. So I like to see that in in your presentation. I have a question which I don't know if it's uh, maybe too technical, if it's, we, we can talk about it on, on the Slack. I saw that you uh, adopted the, the CIS ontology for the feature of interest and the property um, classes, for example. If I'm not wrong, because I, I just had a quick look at the, at the new ontology of Sarek, which I wasn't aware of until <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> Uh, the the well the link between the properties and the feature of interest uh, this is property of property in CIS it was functional and uh, I think that in this version of Sarek is not functional so that you are maybe more aligned with uh, social flexibility to allow the, the the user to use their preferred modeling way is it is it correct is it the reason why you, you did it or uh, yeah, so we took uh, so uh, some uh, uh, suggestions from the experiences in the CS project, uh, which you also see reflected also in the way uh, uh, even the portal is done, and even now the namespace and uh, so so because we, yeah we had discussion about uh, slash ash and so on, and then you can see also even the way it's uh, documented the 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 the, 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 the entire uh, website uh, and and Saref it changed based on the experience in that. So this is one thing. Uh, um, in that, uh, I do not recall, of course, we should ask Maxime, but I believe that uh, then in CS uh, was functional, but then in Saref it's, uh, it's not. Because also the idea in Saref uh, in these years of experience, we try 
So we need to give some restrictions, but we try to be quite open with restrictions. So to avoid to give restrictions unless they are really necessary. Because, uh, yeah, so like in the case of the functional uh, property in there, uh, it would be uh, probably uh, too, too much and too restrictive. So as much as we can, we try to keep uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the model open for possibilities, uh, guiding where is, uh, is, is needed. Yeah, so Maxime wants to say something about that, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just raised my hand. Hello, everyone. Um, so indeed, one of the main reasons why um, integrating these, we didn't integrate some of these uh, strict actions is to not break uh, backward compatibility if, if, um, because this was very important. So in, in some of the usage of SARS in the past, and uh, also if we wanted SARS to be aligned to SSN, um, then this uh, functional property axiom uh, wasn't uh, a good thing because um, we had a lot of usage of SARS and SSN that were using um, prop the property class um, like to to define instances such as you know temperature in in, in the generic sense or humidity in the generic sense and um, this functional prop well functional property axiom would um, force all well the usage of uh, SARS to um, to go in a direction where we define instances of property as like the temperature of this room, the humidity of this room, and um, that wouldn't be backward compatible with with um, with, with previous usage of size. Okay, yeah, that that makes that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, are welcome. And, and thanks for your work because it's one of the examples where SARF can be reused with the other ontologies and especially I like a lot the one with the IDSA, the International Data Space Architecture Ontology for the contracts and so on. Very good. We, we will talk more about that uh, anyway. Yeah, we will have more, more chat, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yes. Hey, okay, thanks. I think we have time for one more question. Um, so, uh, Milos Sipatik has raised his hand. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Sure. Perfect. Uh, so, thank you for the for the great talk, and uh, I would like to to use this opportunity to to pick your brain about the uh, uptake of SARF, and especially because the the whole domain. Everybody wants to to do uh, energy energy uh, reduction. I mean, energy use reduction and all that. But uh, we we know that th there isn't a lot of space there to to do that. So, what do you think the uptake of SARF in smart appliances and uh, uptake of smart appliances in general would be in the in the future? Because I think you have the unique unique position to comment to that because you are really in in this domain you are really integrated into into EU projects that uh, that push that so if you can comment to that I would be very grateful. Thanks a lot for this great question, actually. So I think one of the big challenges is the following. So it's always about energy reduction, energy efficiency, energy consumption uh, improvement and so on. But it's also true that, uh, well, also anyways, uh, what are the business models behind this and how are we going to make sure that after even the pilots, this will really be uh, used and uh, taken by, 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 by the users and by the people. The uh, problem is that smart appliances are already super efficient by themselves, by the way, the, the, the ones that we have nowadays. So even in terms of saving of costs, this is not even that much to convince the users. So get these smart appliances, pay more for this because then you get some savings. Yeah, okay, and you can be sustainable. Yes, okay, people are uh, sensitive to that, but it's not uh, it's not yet that, that much. So it's only when you combine these, so this type of energy service with non-energy service that are more for the comfort 
sort of people, for making them uh, being more comfortable, automate things that uh, routines and stuff. So it's all in combination with AI, with explainable things, and knowledge graphs that you can use based on ontologies like Saraf and so on. Then you have these, you know what's happening. You can explain also to the user, you can combine the data. And uh, this will really give uh, added value because still people don't have the perception. So they know that these smart appliances are useful. Some of them are buying them, but they are not yet. There is not this, this uptake as, as, it, as, it, as it should. So we really need to help that. So I think it's the combination of the uh, energy service with comfort, with sustainable, with, with sharing, with things that can be done at the building level, because so far, well, you can do something with your own appliances, but that's nothing you have to, 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 to put together what's happening in a building and, and be able to be interoperable with other buildings. And we are paving the way towards uh, this, uh, this direction. And it's interesting to see there are several ways that we can do that and we will experiment on that. For example, in the Dutch pilot, we work closely also with investors, building investors. So there are buildings being, uh, being built. For that, users that participate in the pilot, we know what are the profiles of the users and then we can also define what are the use cases that hopefully are, are the best suitable for them, which involve the user, uh, give them uh, possibility to automate their tasks more know more uh, know and better what's happening with their data and even visualize it in a, visualize it in a different way uh, if uh, if they like it to interact better with the building it will help to have saving in the building it will help help build building managers to have a better uh, view on what's happening in the building and even for maintenance make buildings a better place to live not talking about the fact that we have pilots in non-residential buildings and more commercial, where of course there the energy efficiency and saving can be important because you have, for example, supermarkets and so on using a lot of energy and they need to do it in a, uh, in a way that it's uh, uh, efficient, of course, uh, together with balancing the, with, the, with the smart grid. So to me, the key is... Um, bring together the energy uh, part uh, uh, together with the comfort part what makes the lives of people uh, better so that people really understand what's the added value <laughs> they're going to invest in that <laughs> to embrace the concept and become part of this type of, 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 of AI and things that are a little bit scary sometimes for them, but they can see and understand what's the benefit of these value, added value services that don't even exist yet, but they can really change their, their lives. And it's still a, <laughs> a way, long way to go, but I think we're really doing the major steps now. Thanks. Great. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, thanks again, Laura. We're going to need to end now and move to the next session. Uh, we're going